Hey guys, how's it going? Scout here, and today I just want to bring you a quick gear video for my upcoming PCT through hike. See the little, uh, the puppy there? So, it might be part of the video. We'll see. Alright guys, so this is the gear I will be taking with me on my upcoming PCT through hike, including this gear over here. This is actually my Sierra equipment, so I'll get to that last. But starting out, let's start with the gear I will be wearing on a daily basis. First up, we have my shirt, which is a long sleeve uh, just a shirt we got at Costco. The brand name is Jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, just so you can see there. Uh, nothing much to say about it. It's just a long sleeve, non-cotton, of course, shirt. Uh, I will be wearing shorts instead of pants on the PCT. I'm not too concerned about the sun. I've already got a pretty good tan going down on my legs. Uh, just, these are just a pair of Walmart running shorts. Uh, the brand name is Russell. If anyone really cares, just got them from Walmart for like five or six bucks or something like that. Then I have a pair of Ex Officio boxer shorts for my underwear, and then a pair of Darn Tough socks. And then for uh, additional sun protection from like my neck, more specifically, I have a wool, uh, a wool buff here. I'll probably just put it around my neck, like a uh, like a scarf sort of for sun protection. Or what I'll do is is I will tuck it underneath my cap, and um, have it kind of hang down my neck, and it'll kind of provide me some sun protection that way. And then I also have my hat, which I'm actually wearing right here. This is a cool hat. I really, really like these hats. They, they're made of this kind of stretchy uh, stretchy material, I believe. As you can see here, so you can get it here. Uh, nope, wait, maybe it's on the other side. No, that's just, that's just other side. No, wait, oh, here we go. It's actually made out of, see here, 95% nylon and 5% elastin. Sorry, wait, that's Italian. Well, nylon and elastic, that's what it's made out of. And I really like these hats, I really like the brand name, cool. So that's the hat I will be wearing on the PCT. Uh, next up, we have some of my other, some of my extra extra clothes, rather, and my cold weather gear. Starting out, we have just a just little beanie. My grandmother got me a number of years ago. Um, it's just, you know, hunting, hunting beanie. But it keeps me warm, I've used it. I use it on the AT, and I really like it. So I'll be bringing that with me. I have an extra pair of Ex Officio boxer shorts. Uh, this is my sleeping shirt. It's my The Trek Patagonia lightweight, really awesome shirt. I'm using it for sleeping in. I have an extra pair of Darn Tough socks and a pair of Smart Wool socks for sleeping in. I'll be mostly be using these for sleeping. However, if I need to, I can use them for hiking. Uh, next up, I have a pair of... These are pretty much like long underwear, a wool long underwear by Terramar. I think you guys can see there, it's upside down. I'm sorry about that. Let's get it right there. There you go, Terramar long underwear, wool long underwear for if it gets really cold. Um, if it's really cold, like in the Sierras, uh, I'll put those on in addition to my shorts and that'll, that'll keep me warm. I'm not too concerned about that. And then for my gloves, I have a little, it's just a thin pair of hiking gloves for keeping my hands a little bit warm. I found that as I kind of, as I grip my hiking poles, my hands really don't get all that cold. So I just wanted something, a little something thin, lightweight to just help additionally with a little bit of warmth. This is just what I'm trying to say. And then I have a pair of Outdoor Research Active Ice Spectrum Sun Gloves for the desert section, um, just to have, just from some additional, you know, protection from the sun and all that. And then I have a pair of Sun Dick uh, down booties for sleeping in. I found that my feet sometimes get kind of cold, and if I have cold feet, I don't, I do not sleep well. So that's what those are for. Um, if I don't need them, I'll just send them home. But I'd rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. So that's just kind of where those fall in. Uh, next up, we have my jacket, which is the. This is a, a Lightened Equipment Torrid Apex jacket. I recently got this. This is the custom with the, the blue outside, black inside. Um, so far, I put it on a couple of times and it is super warm. It fits incredibly well. I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm really excited to use it. And it's super lightweight. It probably weighs less than, it weighs definitely weighs less than half a pound. I say probably closer to a quarter pound. Um, but it's a great jacket. It's not, it's actually not down. It's actually synthetic. Um, so I, it can get wet and I'm not too concerned about, um, and not drying out properly if it does get wet and it inevitably probably will at some point. So that's my jacket. That's my main cold weather jacket. And I also have some other stuff down, 
down the row here that we'll get to for other cold weather warmth. So, and then all of my extra extra uh, clothing goes in this Z-Pax uh, Z medium dry sack. Next up, we have my cooking gear. So starting out, we have the Z-Pax large uh, food bag, which actually has all my food in it. I've got five days of food in here. Um, if you guys want to see what I will be bringing with me food-wise on the PCT, just kind of let me know down in the comments, and I'll do another separate video for my food, but otherwise I'm just gonna stick with my gear in this video. But this is the Z-Pax large dry dry food bag that I'll be carrying all my food in. Uh, next up, we have a my Snow Peak 450 milliliter titanium uh, just little cup here. I really like having this. I had this on both of my AT through hikes. Well, one was attempt, the other one was. Anyways, um, my ma what I majorly use this for, in addition to uh, tea at night, which because I really like having tea at, uh, either in the morning or at night after a long, long day. Just having a nice hot cup of tea after a long day of hiking is just absolutely phenomenal. So, um, but if I'm not using it for that, I this I use this for scooping out water from either some like shallow streams or if it's trickling off a rock. And so it really helps collecting water because not always smart water bottles and other implements aren't always very uh, efficient rather at collecting water. So I like having a little cup and it's super lightweight, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, next up we have, we'll go to my pack towel here. It's just this, this is just a microfiber pack towel, great for cleaning up. And then I have my stove, which is the BRS ultralight titanium stove. This thing probably weighs an ounce, ounce and a half, and it's super lightweight. It's really nice. I've actually tested it out a couple times, and it's super steady and sturdy. I'm really happy with it. I'm excited to use it. Uh, next up, we have my pot, which is the the Tox Titan. Oops, there we go. The Tox Titanium 750 milliliter pot with its little lid here. As you can see inside, it's got some graduations uh, for you know measurements for your liquids and whatnot. Um, so that's my pot, super lightweight and great. And then we have my little pocket knife for whatever you might need a pocket knife for. A lighter to light my stove. Uh, my titanium spork, sea to summit titanium, sorry not spork, sea to summit titanium spoon. And then we have this little thing here. So on my Appalachian trail through hike, I actually had a, I had a jet boil. And this came with the jet boil and basically what you do is you put your fuel canister, you attach your fuel canister to this, and this acts as kind of just a, um, like a base. Kind of, it widens out the uh, the weight. So it makes everything a little bit more steady. And so since I'm just gonna be using this really small titanium uh, stove, I wanted something that would provide a little more, you know, stability to my whole cooking setup. And I wasn't gonna risk losing my food. So that's why that's in there. And then next up, we just have my um, this is pretty much made out of the same stuff you would find on a one of those like silver uh, car sun windscreens. Um, although this is actually something called Reflectix, it's a insulation. But I made just a little pot koozie out of that. So you know, cook my boil my food, boil my water, put my food in, stick it in my pot koozie, wait probably 10-15 minutes, and boom, my food will be done. And it minimizes fuel spent and all that. So really happy with that. Super lightweight. Great, so that is my entire cook system. Next up, we have my sleep system. Actually, these are just extra bags. Uh, that's, that goes with my uh, cook system. These are extra. I usually end up repacking a lot of my food, and I, I'll, I'll get to that if I ever do a video for that. Um, but I end up repacking a lot of my food, so that's why I have extra bags. But anyways, moving on to my sleep system. Um, not this, this is this is range system. This is the REI Igneo 20 degree down sleeping bag. Now, they do not actually produce this bag anymore. Uh, it's been replaced by the REI Igneo, I think 19 or 17 degree bag. Um, and it's, it's like purple. They don't make this this one anymore. Um, Cause I got this, actually I think, it's, I think I got this one on the, uh, yeah, ugh. I got this one at the end of his production line. So I got it super cheap, but it's a great bag. I used it on my entire Appalachian Trail through hike. It kept me very warm and I'm super happy with it. Um, so that's the bag I'll be taking with me. Um, if I feel like I need a warmer bag for the Sierras, I will probably be getting the Enlightened Equipment, Igni Ugh. Enlightened Equipment Enigma, I believe is, is the, uh, the quilt. 
the 10 degree quilt, but for now, I'm gonna take this with me. I shouldn't have any problems with it, but, so that's my bag. Uh, moving on, this is actually my, I'm gonna, so whatever. This is actually my little headlamp. It's just an Energizer Walmart brand headlamp. Um, I had some of the more expensive ones in the past, and every time I got like one of those, you know, really nice black diamond headlamps, I found they, they ended up breaking within like a week, and I got really frustrated with it. So I just went to Walmart and bought this like cheap, probably $10 headlamp and it's lasted me an entire through hike and more. So, I mean, you can't really beat that and it works great. Um, so this is the headlamp I'll be taking with me and hey, if it breaks, I'll just go to Walmart and get another one for 10 bucks. So, you know, that's that. Uh, moving on back to my sleep system. We have the, this is the Climate Pillow X. Um, previously I had a Sea to Summit ultralight pillow and that one actually started leaking. So I went, to, I've moved to this one. It's actually only weighs about 1.95 ounces, as you can see there. Um, I have tested it out once, uh, just in kind of in my normal bed, and it was pretty comfortable. I wasn't a huge fan of the uh, material that your head actually rests on. It's just plastic, which kind of feels weird. So what I did was I actually covered the pillow with a shirt um, and then slept on that. So that's what I'll probably do is I'll take like an extra shirt or something or extra just piece of clothing or something. And I'll cover this with it, but I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see. But that's the pillow I'll be taking for now. And then for my sleeping pad, I have the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. Um, super lightweight pad. Um, there's a lot of reviews online. You guys can go check that out. Not much else to say about it. And then my sleeping bag will be fit, in, fit into this z Packs. Uh, medium plus dry bag. So moving on, I guess we'll move over here. We have my electronics. So this is a three port, uh, one of which is a Qualcomm quick charge port. It's just a wall charging port. So I can charge three of my devices at once since I will actually have three devices. Um, uh, which we'll get to in a second here. Then next up we have my little bag. So I got my my three, there'll be, there'll be another one. There'll be three cords in here. And then extra batteries for my headlamp. And then we have my Anchor 21,000 milliamp external battery. Since I will be um, since I will be recording all of my video on my phone, I needed a pretty big battery. I considered taking this one and, and in addition to my Anchor 10,000 milliamp battery. However, I have recently got a brand new phone. I have the which I will be using to record all my video which is the Ga uh, Samsung Galaxy S10e. And so far it has a really great battery life. I'm very happy with it. And I'm actually using it right now to record this entire video. So it takes actually a really darn good video. Shoots at 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. In addition to um, ultra, ultra high definition, which is like 25 something by something. I forget the numbers, but at 60 FPS. So it shoots really, really good video. However, I won't be shooting at quite that high because the, uh, the file sizes will get ridiculous. But anyways, so I'm sticking with the 21,000 for now. If I feel like I need more battery power, I will send for the 10,000 as well. So that way I'll have 3,100 3, uh, milliamps of battery power if I need it, but I don't expect I will. So moving on, we have my, this is my oh crap device or my oh, oh shit button. So this is my Garmin, Garmin InReach SE Plus. I will be using this to uh, communicate with my parents out in the boonies and just kind of send them a little ping once in a while, showing them where I am. And you know, if I need it, I have the uh, the oh shit button. So that's what that's for. And I believe that's all my electronics, pretty much. Uh, I showed, showed you my phone. Uh, so then moving on to my little, my, uh, <laughs> my medical bag. So starting out we have this cream this is this is basically diaper rash cream and it has saved my ass it saved my ass once so i had some chafing that as a guy was in a very unpleasant place while i was on the appalachian trail and this stuff this stuff was a lifesaver so put it on and in the uh the chafing immediately just went away no more pain no more discomfort and uh it was it was <laughs> it was a blessing uh, next up, I have a some, some uh, chapstick. Sorry, some chapstick just for keeping my uh, lips not coming, becoming blistered, and or cracked from the cold or heat or what have you. Uh, then we have a just a little safety pin for popping blisters if I have any. I don't expect I will, but if I do, there it is. 
And then I have a little roll of Luco tape for those blisters or pretty much anything else I might need it for. I have a few bandages here, a little, little bottle of ibuprofen, and a Joshua Tree SPF sun stick, uh, just for a little bit more sun protection. If I feel like a certain part of me is getting uh, sc <laughs> scorched, so that's what I have that for. And moving on, we have my toiletries. Got my deuce of spades, got toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, and my toilet paper, as well as a, uh, a little um, tweezers down there just for plucking a certain unibrow and a certain guy. So moving on, we have my water system, which is I will be carrying four liters of water in total. Uh, since I'll be leaving kind of early in the season, I feel like I probably won't need a full five liters. Most of my water, well, most of the water sources will still be running. However, if I feel like I need more water to carry, if I need to carry more water, then I'll just pick up another smart water bottle or something comparable. Um, but starting out, I'm just going to carry four liters and kind of, we'll just kind of see where it goes from there. So I've got two smart water bottles there, as well as the knock. Vecto two liter water carrier and then I'll be filtering all my water with the Sawyer squeeze and with this uh, Ring attachment. I forget the name of it, but this is basically so that I can attach um, One end I'll basically attach the Sawyer to my knock and then my smart water bottle will attach To the top of it right here that way. It's just one continuous system and I don't risk um, I don't risk uh, Spilling any water and it just it makes everything a little bit more simple so moving on, we have my rain gear. So first up is my the rain cover for my pack. And then we have, this is my rain jacket. Uh, it's a little on the heavy side. This is a, a Marmot Gore-Tex rain jacket. I had it um, for many years now. It's super, it keeps me very warm. It's windproof as well as waterproof. Um, however, when you're hiking, you never really stay dry when you're hiking when, and it's raining rather because you just kind of sweat and there's condensation. And so the best it really does is it keeps you, it keeps you warm. Um, but and yet, regardless, it's pretty nice. I like it. Um, it's a little on the heavier side, but uh, it will keep me warm and dry, you know, semi-dry-ish <laughs> uh, when I need it. So that's the rain jacket I'll be carrying as well as a pair of rain pants. Uh, these are just some rain pants I picked up a number of years ago. I don't really know. I think this is the brand there. Uh, Red Red Ledge Adult Small Rain Pants. Uh, next up, we have my tent. Actually, should bring, there we go. Next up, we have my tent, which is the Z Pax Duplex. Um, it's definitely the big the big spender I've spent on this this whole expedition. Um, it's super lightweight. There's a lot of reviews I know you can find online. Um, I wanted the extra space that way I could actually fit my my uh, pack and belongings inside with me. Uh, when I was on the Appalachian Trail, I actually only had a one-person tent, and I ended up having to leave my pack outside in the rain, um, whenever it rained rather. Or I'd le I'd leave my pack outside because it just wouldn't really fit inside with me reasonably. Um, however, I kind of found a way around that. I would just put my um, my rain my rain pack cover over my pack and then I would lean it up against a tree or just lay it on the ground and it stayed dry enough and it wasn't a huge deal. But regardless, I'd like to keep everything inside with me as I can. So that's why I'm with the two person instead of the one person. A little heavier than the one person, but it's still way lighter than what I had before. So not a huge deal. And then we have 10 aluminum stakes for uh, my tent here. I only need eight, but I've got two extra just in case. Next, we have, next up, we have my shoes, which are a pair of Salewa Trail Runners. Um, I found that Salewa really fits my foot well. I've got a really narrow foot, and Salewa's shoes are just really great for me. Um, so if you have a narrow foot, definitely check out Salewa. And inside, we have a pair of green super feet. Um, I really like these inserts. They're really, really great. I've used them on both the uh, first 2016 AT thru-hike attempts and my AT thru-hike um, in 2017. Really loved them. They were great for my feet. I had almost zero blisters or problems after I got these. So definitely, definitely excited to, uh, definitely glad I have those. Highly recommend them. So definitely check them out if you can. Uh, next up, we have my, I guess we're moving over here. We have my Z-Seat, and which I absolutely adore. This thing 
is kind of a, a, a butt saver, so to speak. So basically the idea with the Z seat is you can have a nice, comfortable place to sit no matter where you are. It'll also double as a, uh, a fire break if you need it. Like let's say, you know, you're, uh, it's really windy out. You'll put your this, this around your stove and it'll act as a bit of a wind break rather, not a fire break. Um, in addition, if it's raining and you need somewhere dry to sit, well, voila, you have somewhere dry to sit. So highly recommend this. Really can't say enough good things about it. So definitely taking this with me. The next up and almost lastly, I believe we have my my uh, hiking poles. They're just a pair of oops, upside down again. Let's see here, Cascade Mountain Tech hiking poles with the uh, a quart grip uh, flick lock system. They're aluminum. There's not a whole lot to say about them. They are pretty cheap. They're about twenty bucks on Amazon. Um, I mean, they're flick lock system. They're aluminum. There's not really a whole lot you can go wrong with them. So I decided to go with these cheaper ones instead of just going with the more expensive uh, black diamonds. I have used black diamonds in the past and I really like them. Um, however, I just don't really see the need at the moment to go with anything more expensive, seeing as how the PCT is a less technical trail than the Appalachian Trail. Um, on the AT, you have a lot of like boulder scrambling and other places where it can be kind of sketchy when th with your footing. So I want so it's I feel like it's more important to have a a more well known or dependable dependably solid hiking pole on the at but on the pct since it's also a horse trail and there won't be quite as much kind of sketchy bouldering <laughs> like you'll like you'll find on the appalachian trail so going with a cheaper option is probably fine i mean worst case scenario if they break i'll end up just buying some black diamonds but i'll start with those and we'll see how they work i'm not really expecting them to break i don't think i mean i have to use them for my tent but i mean it's the aluminum flick lock system. Nothing complicated. I don't unless you just critically fail. But anyways, don't expect much to them. But so next up we have my bag, which is the Osprey Exos. Or sorry, Osprey Atmos 65 AG, which is anti gravity. And this is the same pack I took with me on my 2017 Appalachian Trail through hike. It's still going strong. It's still very solid. There's no real problems with it. There's a few scratches and scuffs, but it's all working perfect. And I mean, worst case scenario, Osprey has their awesome unlimited lifetime warranty. So if something breaks, I'll just send it into Osprey and I'll get a brand new pack probably for no questions asked if it, you know, something critically fails while I'm out on the trail. But I honestly don't expect it to. This in, it's in absolutely phenomenal condition for being on an entire through hike with me. Um, there's really no, no issues with it. It's still very solid love it pack it is on the heavier side um but the thing is yeah it's on the heavy side but if i need to i can load this pack up and i don't have to worry about it either breaking on me and i don't have to worry about it being uncomfortable and unco uncomfortable for me to hike in so that's why i went with this pack and as opposed to a uh, more standard ultralight pack um but you know one day one day i'll get to ultralight but for now i'm sick with this guy i'm really happy with him so that's pretty much all of my standard gear. Now let's move on to my Sierra gear. This is the gear I will be picking up once I hit the Sierras. Um, starting out, we have a, this is my wool, pretty much the opposite of my, <laughs> my wool underwear, wool uh, base layer underwear. This is a, just a base layer, long sleeve top uh, for extra warmth in the high Sierras. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully it won't be that cold, but if I need it, there I have it. And then next up, we have my bear canister, which is the Bear Vault uh, BV500. I think it's the 500 or the 450. It says both, but I think it's the 500 online. Um, just, you know, heavy plastic. This is one of the, definitely one of the cheaper bear canisters if any of you are still wondering which one you should get. Um, so that's the bear canister I'll be carrying. Next up, we have a pair of waterproof socks, and the brand name for these is Randy Sun. Um, waterproof socks are something I highly, highly recommend, especially for those of you who are doing the Appalachian Trail. Although, if you're doing the AT, I'm not sure why I'm watching a PCT gear video. But anyways, if you're doing the any trail, really, I highly recommend waterproof socks. I'll be picking up these up in the Sierras for the uh, heavy amount of snow that I'll probably be trekking through, and it'll keep my feet dry which is a huge thing because, you know, cold, wet feet are 
definitely uh, no fun. So, and plus, for if I have to cross any streams, keep my, you know, just keep my feet dry. Really, I mean, I really cannot recommend waterproof socks enough. And these are these are actually pretty cheap. They're highly highly reviewed on Amazon. They're only twenty bucks. So, I mean, I don't weigh that much. So, I mean, unless you're a fan of you know wet feet, <laughs> definitely pick up a pair of those. And then next up, we have my micro spikes. These are a pair of Catula micro spikes. Um, I decided to go with a little bit more expensive uh, branded micro spikes, or because they were highly reviewed, um, decided to get these instead of just like a normal pair of the oh, what are they called? The cheaper twenty dollar. What are they called? Oh, jeez, I can't remember, but. These are a bit more on the expensive side, but they're highly reviewed, highly recommended, and I wanted something that was dependable and was not going to break on me uh, the middle of the Sierras and I'll probably need them. So just a pair of Cthulhu Micro Spikes, um, highly reviewed online. So those are the Micro Spikes I'll be going with. Next up, we have a pair of, just a, sorry, not a pair. We have a little tube of Afterbite. I've heard the uh, mosquitoes, especially up in Northern California and Oregon, are kind of just a seventh level of hell. So having a little tube of afterbite for all those mosquito bites and not driving me up a wall is a nice idea. So taking that with me. Next up we have my ice bike, which is a Petzl Glacier Light Ride Ice Ice Bike. Ice pick. Ice pick, I think. Um, so don't really know how to use this very well, seeing as I live in Florida, but we'll have to learn pretty quick. So Pretty lightweight, it's, it's a hollow on the inside. Um, so that's the ice pick I'll be taking with me. Uh, next up we have these, which are, I guess these just be like snow, snow somethings, I'm not really sure. But basically these attach on the end of my trekking pole and they will help with um, not sinking too deep into the snow. So I'm gonna take these with, or I have these sent to me. That should help with kind of trekking across that snow. Uh, next up, we just have a, a little head net for the mosquitoes. And that's all of my Sierra equipment. So, that is the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Hope you maybe found an idea for a piece of gear that you still need. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button if you liked anything. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can. I will see you guys out there, and have a good day.